Hi, and welcome to another edition of Crosswalk brought to you by Crossworks Ministries. Again, I'm going to be your tour guide, Anthony Sullivan, and we're going to jump right back in to where we left off after we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you for this time of your word coming forth with power and revelation in the finished work of your son, Jesus Christ. We just praise you and we magnify you for it, Father. We thank you in advance for all of the breakthroughs that are going to proceed the reading, declaring, and acting, believing in your word. In Jesus' name. All right. So we left off last week. And the um, we were talking about Christ's work on the cross. So this week we're going to continue that. But I'm going to read out some verses here, beginning with uh, Psalms 103, verse 12. So we're going to go to Psalm 103, verse 12. And in these verses, we're going to see um, what the prophets declared, because these are going to be prophetic uh, verses that we're going to look at. We're going to see what the prophets declare what happened to our sins through the death of Jesus Christ. So Psalm 103 verse 12, Psalm 103 verse 12 reads, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. So the prophet here in Psalm 103 verse 12 declares about sin concerning the death of Jesus Christ that his death removed, it says, removed our transgressions from us. Now we're going to go to Isaiah 1, verse 18. And in Isaiah 1, verse 18, it reads, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So the prophet here in Isaiah, so Isaiah the prophet is declaring concerning sin, what happened to it through Jesus' death on the cross is that sins that were like scarlet become white as snow. They're red like crimson, those sins, and they'll become like wool, which wool primarily is white. Then we're going to go again in the prophet Isaiah, to Isaiah 38, verse 17, which reads, Indeed, it was for my own peace that I had great bitterness, but you have lovingly delivered my soul from the pit of corruption, for you have cast all my sins behind your back. So the prophet here declares that what happened through our sin, through the death of Jesus Christ, that our sins were cast behind our father's back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now we're going to go to Acts chapter 10, verse 43. And Acts chapter 10, verse 43 reads, All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. What does everyone who believes in him receive? says forgiveness of sins. So what do you and I receive when we believe in him? None other than forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to go to Hebrews now, chapter 1, verse 1 through 3, which Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 through 3 reads, In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. The son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Amen. So in this verse, it says that God's glory radiates through whom? It says it radiates through the sun. Who is the exact representation of God's being? The sun. Who sustains all things 
by his powerful word, the son, hallelujah. What is the son's name? His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus, amen. What did Christ's death provide for you and me concerning our sins? In this verse, it says that Christ's death provided purification for sins. Hallelujah, purification, a washing, a cleansing of sin. What did Jesus do after he had provided purification for sins? In this verse, Hebrews chapter one, it says that Jesus sat down, hallelujah. He sat down. What does this imply concerning his work on the cross? If Jesus sat down, we know that in the Old Testament that not any of the high priests were able to sit down because the work was never finished. The work was never completed. So this should imply concerning the work of the cross that Christ, excuse me, completed perfectly. He finished the work. Perfectly finished work is why Jesus was able to sit down because the work is finished once and for all. Hallelujah. In giving his life for us at the cross, did Jesus do enough to take care of the sin issue? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. We just read. He sat down and the work was finished. If the work was not finished, it wouldn't be enough. But since the word is enough and I declare more than enough, yes, Jesus was able to sit down. Thus, it was more than enough to take care of the sin issue. Since Christ has died for all of our sins, forgiving each and every one that we have and will ever commit, what response should we have to him? We should have an appreciative, grateful attitude and response towards Christ in his finished work. Hallelujah. Because he did it all for us. He didn't have to, but he did. Thank you, Jesus. As we have learned of the multitude of Christ's work in giving his life for us, do you have more confidence to trust in and depend upon the work that he has done for you? I know I do. I know that I do, and I believe you do too. So the answer would be yes. Christ gave his life for you and me, and this is an incontrovertible fact. The completeness of his work is referred to as the finality of the cross. Nothing was left to accomplish regarding man's redemption. Christ has done it all, hallelujah. This was his work and not ours. Understanding this is basic to the Christian's faith. When we are in Christ, our sins will not become, they can never become between us and God. Hallelujah. Isn't that great? Our sins can never become, they can never come between us and God. Our sins can never come between us and God. I'm going to say that again. Your sins can never come between you and God when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, which means you are appreciative and grateful for the finished work of Christ, the work with which he purified our sins, the work that allowed God to be able to cast all our sins behind his back, the work that we just read earlier, that has removed our sins as far as the east is from the rest, um, from the west, excuse me, our transgressions, even our sins against God, our sins against each other, generational sins that have been passed down through Adam have all been removed, cleansed, purified, wiped out, eradicated. That's a good word, eradicated. Man, our sins are gone. Have you believed and received this? The forgiveness of your sins? I know you want to if you haven't. 
So right now we're going to take an opportunity to pray the prayer of salvation. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for my sins. Taking my place. Dying for me and as me. After taking my sin upon yourself. I thank you, Father, for your son, Jesus. I believe that Jesus came. Jesus died. And Jesus is alive. You raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Because he did a perfect finished work. And removed my sins. Wiped out my sins. And now I receive Jesus into my heart into my life as my Lord and my Savior. Hallelujah. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, then you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior as you have confessed. The Bible says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, then you shall be saved. You have just done that and you are welcomed into the family of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And now you have forgiveness of sins. You have been forgiven. All your sins have been wiped out and sin is no longer an issue that can separate you from God. You are no longer separated from the Father, but you are in right relationship with him. Hallelujah. And I just want to say welcome to the family. And now I'm going to declare a blessing over you all. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant to you his shalom peace for your going in, for your going out and coming in, being blessed. As Deuteronomy 28 says, blessed coming in and blessed going out blessed in the field, blessed in your home, blessed in everything you put your hands to. The Lord Shalom peace bring you the joy and fulfillment that only he can bring into your life. In Jesus name, amen. God bless you.